Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. We just moved onto our new sailboat and this week has been another one of lots of learning experiences. We've had some challenges, sure, but also a ton of fun and discovery. So come sail away with us as we take you through our second week living on the high seas, making sure we seize the day. If you remember from last week's episode, we ended the week sitting in the dark as we didn't have enough power. This also meant that all the freezers defrosted and we had water everywhere. It was a job that needed to be done, so we are trying to see the positives in the situation. So today we spoke to the previous owner and find out how to reconnect the panels and maximize our input. We also found out how to get our gas tank filled. It was heavy, so we tested it by turning the fixing on the top, but nothing came out. After lugging it to shore, we learned that American tanks have a safety feature that English tanks don't. They won't let the gas out unless they are connected. So we have plenty to keep us going. We were just a little red faced. Today we stayed on board, monitoring the solar and making sure this issue has really been rectified. After the stress of the last few days, lack of power, moving back and forth to shore and learning how to live on a boat, it was nice to have a more relaxed day. We showed Luna what happens when you step off the boat onto the moving floor outside, and she did not look impressed. I think she thought that it was trying to eat us or something. She seems happy keeping her distance, and so are we. While I was making breakfast this morning, it felt like the boat was being buffeted and hit from underneath. Turns out a huge shoal of fish were jumping and hitting the boat, chasing after whatever they were trying to eat. Well, hello neighbours, nice to meet you. Now that the electricity issue has been rectified, it's time to move on to water. We are starting to run low. So with instructions from the previous owners and the manual in hand, we were ready to have a go. Apparently it's a really easy system to work but you could have fooled me. The instructions all seem very confusing. I'm sure once we've done it a few times, it will seem easy, but until then, it's a bit like magic. Press a few buttons and boom, there's fresh water from seawater. Well, that's the idea. We followed the instructions, we had error messages, flashing lights, and in the end, we had less water than when we started. What the floof? How did we even manage that? going to be another steep learning curve. Well, we'll cope with tap water from the apartment for another day or so and call in reinforcements, aka the previous owners. We spent the morning talking to the previous owners and they didn't seem that worried about what we said happened when we tried to make water. But now apparently we don't have enough water in the system to make water. So who knew you had to have water to make water? Well, now we do. So. 10 big bottles of water from the shop, as it must be unchlorinated water apparently. And now we have enough water to start to make water. But it'll have to be tomorrow as the sun is starting to go down and we'll run out of electricity. I think the sea air is definitely getting to us. We're happy if we make it to 9 o'clock at the minute before we fall asleep. Okay, now I really mean it. Today is the day. We will make water one way or another, even if I have to call on a higher power. So following the instructions, we fail on the first attempt. Switch it off, start again. We did get there in the end. Tenth time is the charm, apparently. No idea what we did differently on the successful attempt compared to the failed ones, but we got there. So I'm sat in the salon with the little countdown on the water making machine and water is filling our tanks. Yay! Next time it will be easier, as we won't switch the system off. But this is another thing we can now do. 11 days in, and we already feel comfortable with the living part of boat living. We still have to learn how to sail, but that will start this time next week, as we have someone booked to give us our first lesson. Today was designated cleaning day. The back of the boat is looking really grubby with all the trips that we've done on and off recently. A bit of elbow grease and some scrubbing and it looked really good. We had also planned to do some more scrubbing on the bottom of the boat. 
but the current was so strong that we changed our mind and decided to sort out some of the storage inside instead. The previous owners had left a lot of useful items and just said if there was anything that we didn't need to pass it on to somebody else so it could still be useful. So going through all of the cupboards and plates and glasses and cups, we made a keep pile and a donate pile. As with any home, there were a lot of extra lids in comparison to containers, so these got thrown out. We had also been left some food in the storeroom, so I went through that to see which ones I can eat due to dietary restrictions and offered it out to the local area. Not the afternoon we expected, but productive, and the kitchen is a bit more organised to our way now. Today was the day for me to have a go at cleaning the bottom of the boat. I know from when I've been scuba diving before that I'm extra floaty, and this doesn't really help when you need to be under the water. I also have a psychological fear of not being able to see the bottom where we are. When I scuba, the descent is the worst part for me. When we get to the bottom and I have things to look at, I can calm down and relax. But on the way down, it's not so good. Today, the water was a bit like soup and we had a fairly strong current. I got geared up. You might think this would be slightly overkill, so let me explain why I'm wearing it. We have a hood, snorkel, fin, and gloves. It looks a bit like I'm about to do a polar plunge rather than swim in the Caribbean Sea. But we had been told that the little creatures that live on the bottom of your boat, when you scrape them off, look for a new home. And your ears can be one of them. Uh, no thank you. To begin with, I felt a bit like a beached whale. Everything was awkward and I didn't feel like I was making much headway. So we added a rope over the side so I had some leverage and could hold on and I wasn't fighting the current so much, then I got it. I only managed down one side before it started to get dark, but it was some progress. Once I got out and found my little friends in every crease and crevice, there were lots of little shrimps holding onto my clothes. I've named them water fleas and they seriously gross me out. I was very glad I was wearing the hood. It's been a week of challenges, learning and little victories. I'm so glad that we managed to make water. I thought we would never get it working. So thank you for joining us on this journey. If you'd enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. See you next time and remember to seize the day.